103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, uh, November 22nd. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Oh, sashiburi dane, mina. <laughs> I'll need a translation for that. Uh, and our guests today are Doubtfire. <clears throat> Say hello. And George. Hey, George. Hi. Digital hello. Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. If you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for Free Thought Radio Hour, I'm sorry, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page, and use the messaging function to send us questions and or comments. Wombat, what do you have for us today as far as the topic goes? Hey, today we're going to be talking about spiritual healing and what can we do about it with regard to COVID. And I think that's going to be pretty crazy. But I think before we go into it, we would normally send our love out to our own Dread Pirate Higgs. But he's going to be taking some naps right now. He's working really hard. So until then, I want to go around table and just see how everyone's doing today. Larry, how are you folding up? How you feel? Oh, doing fine. Just staying nice. in, staying safe. Playing computer cool, cool. games. Uh, <laughs> Good job warring. staying six feet away from yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Warring on Facebook with, uh, um, you know, topics of d- different types, usually uh, atheism versus uh, relief. Larry, you're comfortably retired. I wonder how is it that you can actually spend your time enjoyably starting meme wars with people on Facebook? That seems like the, the last thing I want to be getting my hands well, into. It, it's just like uh, the believers do it because they want to make the world a better place for mm. you know for everybody they they believe that you know uh, religious belief is necessary to make a person a moral person mm. well i know that there's a lot of downside and a lot of harm that come from religious belief so i also want to make the world a better place <laughs> by fighting that harm okay okay yeah He's got to. He's got to do those fights, man. And he is there. He is making memes all day. Like you got to just track this guy down. Well, and, and holding conversations and taking exception to some of the things that are said. Sure. But sure. I, I spend a lot of time on Facebook and keep posting those games. pictures, though. Yeah. Like I think at the end of the day, like you should come up with a second book that's just a bunch of all the pictures that you like cobbled oh, together. Oh, and my memes. A meme yeah, yeah, yeah. Book. You have yeah. meme book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Scott Williamson, how you doing? Doubtfire, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Just staying in uh, as much as possible and working at, you know, I work at a hospital usually. Wow. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a so-called sterile environment. So I, I can't understand you. I, I'm, I'm happy because of the echo. Um, I, I missed what you said. We he said work he was working a at a hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He works at a hospital. Oh, okay. I, that's what I thought he said. Yeah. It's supposed to be a sterile environment, but there's a lot of sick people coming in. Like, how close are you to the, these guys? Well, luckily this week, um, it was a uh, it was a new section of the whole hospital in Irvine, <laughs> so there was a lot of construction work going on. So basically, I was just running the uh, IT stuff, like um, you know, the wiring and the computer stuff and configuring all that equipment for them, scanners and the hospital equipment. So it was not around six people. Good. Okay, that's good, man. Stay safe. You got a family. That's that's the thing that you know. Uh, we're going to be going into that in more detail. George, I'd actually like for you to set up that the 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 the, the rant for today. But before we go to you, George, I want to show you guys something that I just got in the mail. Super happy about it. Oh, it's my Make America Made America Great Already hat. <laughs> 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 Available for the low low cost of eight dollars. You too can annoy all of your neighbors in Kentucky or in Tennessee. <laughs> I think when this came in the mail, I was so happy. Um, I'm, I'm debating. So like at my job, there's two guys that have the, the original MAGA hats, like right there on the top of their dash hood. And I'm just like, 
how do I how do I play this game right? Because <laughs> I don't yeah. go to I'm not gonna go in the work with it, but I could leave it on my dashboard too and park sure, strategically sure. between the two cards right. and be like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I already got right. the eight. For those hat. who are listening on a podcast, it's a blue hat with white lettering. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it on yeah, the lettering says Made America Great Amer- Amer- Made America Great already. Made America Great Already. It's true, and it is true. Like you know, I believe we all work together to make this country great since the beginning. And it is truly the benefit of a melting pot of different cultures and different ideas and different ideologies coming together. And who's to I think say that one I, person can make it a great thing? Anyway. I think that the greatness of America lies in our diversity, Boom, the maybe. differences between uh-huh. us. I agree. Perspectives I agree. that we bring. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yes. George. How have you been, and would you like to start off the thing on COVID? Like, how are things in Athens? The things in Athens are absolutely horrendous. Our death rate from COVID has more than doubled in three weeks. So we have more dead people in the last three weeks in this county than we've had in the entire preceding year. And... I am working on an Amazon order right now, a big Amazon order, because to tell you the truth, I'm simply afraid to go shopping in the stores. Um, there are, and There is an increased number of people going to the stores and not wearing masks, and they're doing it in defiance. A defiance of what? I am not completely sure. I mean, it's a political statement. Um, It's a don't tread on me type of sentiment. And, you know, as a certified old person, (laughs) as a person, you know, in the age range of people who are, you know, enthusiastically dying. (laughs) Larry's going to card you for a second. Hold on a second. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, so... um, um, Two of the food stores here in town have put up big signs by the entrance that say masks required. Right. And and uh, people are just ignoring it. Right. So I went and I lost it. I lost it at one of the supermarkets. So there were two men in beer, with beards standing on the checkout line with no masks on. And um, I was entering the store. And it's like, I just couldn't stop myself. I said, hey, you guys are not wearing masks. And they replied, yep. Mm. And I said, and I said, you want me to die? And the guy said, nope. And then a woman walked by me and said, God bless you. (laughs) (laughs) This is a perfect storm. Yeah. And I for felt fans, for fans of the show. I mean, this, this is, is not this how is like a triple this trigger is, for George. Morning. Was she is, wearing a mask? <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, she was. I, I feel I am in an insane asylum here, and so uh, I just happened to be passed by the manager, who was wearing a mask, and he was wearing his badge. Now, this is the man whose name is printed on every receipt. This is a wow. huge supermarket. It's in a former Walmart. And I said to him, you know, I'm really glad that you put up a sign at the entrance that said masks are required. He said, thank you. I said to him, but I want you to enforce it. There's people walking around here with masks on. He says, I can't do that. Oh, yeah. So I said to him, do you do you realize how many people have died in the last three weeks here about COVID? He says, I can't stop the people from coming in here. And um, so I have a I have a newspaper here. This is the Daily Post Athenian. Okay, which which comes out four days a week. (laughs) That qualifies as daily. And the headline here is Athens Council Majority Encourages Mask Wearing. Well, thank you. You're encouraging it. And everybody's going to ignore it. Right. 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 If I so I from, just, George, yeah. I can see from your perspective, it's like it's not even just a rude thing that you're doing. Like you're actually doing a very reckless thing for for people who are senior citizens to go into public areas where they're around other people 
not wearing a mask isn't just like a, a expression of your freedom, but it's actually a, a a reckless contribution to endangerment of people like you and other people who just want to be able to go to the store and go back home as healthy as they walked in, right? And I got to eat. You got to eat. I got to yeah. eat. In order to eat, eat, I have to go to the do? store. Forget about it. I, I got to, yeah, I got to go to the store. I got to buy food, you know? It's... Yeah. It's a nutty thing right now. Scott, it sounds like you want to, it sounds like you're thinking some stuff. What are you thinking right now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, I don't know. I've seen, it seems like people here in, in my neck of the woods are pretty, mm-hmm. for the most part, pretty good about it. Like, I hardly ever go to a store or some public place where people are not wearing masks. And I think that's a reflection of the uh, body politic here, that it's mainly a very progressive type of area that I live in. Hmm. Um, But you do have some people that are diehard Trump people and the not wearing masks goes right along with it. And it's so, it's so disheartening you know, to see that, I I don't know what to really say. I mean, if if I see someone, I'm I'm speaking out. You know, like if I if I see a, a person not wearing a mask, I'll say, look, you know, and they and they'll accuse me of being a sheep or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, I haven't gone that far. I would say this: it's one thing to not wear a mask, and also in my head, it's another thing to wear a mask but do so improperly, because one is. Hey, I'm choosing not to do this. And I'm like, great. I can see you from a mile away. I'm staying away. I'm staying away from you. (laughs) And you guys might realize like, um, uh, so for black people, there's like, um, two different kinds of racism that we like watch out for. Like there's the explicit variety and then the complicit variety. And like, it's the explicit one. That's like, okay, sure. Confederate flag tattoo, giant truck (laughs) that says we don't care about. It's like, thank you for saving me time from trying to get to know you. That's great. That's good. (laughs) But it's the people who are like, I don't see a problem here. What George Floyd? I don't know. Some things happen. Some things don't happen. It's like, Oh, you're a dangerous person. Good people on person. both sides. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the actual danger here. Cause you're encouraging people to have that kind of mentality and ignore right. a problem. And so like in the same sense, people who don't wear masks, it's like, Oh, I, that's a problem, but I can stay six feet away from you and hopefully I'll be all right. But it's the people who wear a mask, but they only have it like over their mouths and they're like the receptionist area and they're like handing like money back out or they're like handling food at Burger King. I went to, I drove, I drove to a Burger King and it's like lady mask down here, gloved one hand, gloved, not the other hand, dishing out carts from a lot of different people holding my bags of food and bringing it out to me. I'm just like, Ooh, I'm not going to go to dry food right now. Like you, there's a standard for, and people who just throw their masks out on the ground. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a mask just in a parking lot or like next to a bin. Like these are biohazards and people are just throwing away improperly and coming from like a science background and you medical background, Larry, and maybe even from like your military back expertise, you would know that not all trash is treated the same way. Right. And, mm-hmm. and some contaminations need to be thrown away in their own separate waste streams and were not meant for public disposal especially not on the ground like there's things like that just make me really yeah. and then what kills me is that you know they say that they wear their mask below their nose because mm. they say they can't breathe <laughs> yeah i mean doctors yeah. wear those things day in and day out eight mm. eight to twelve hours a day yeah uh, would you excuse your doctor from doing right that, yeah know, during an operation and it's, uh, it's the... just it's a nonsense answer it's a right. dishonest answer and it feeds into a complicit idea of like, I'm not, it's not like I'm not caring about wearing a mask, but you're just, but by wearing it improperly, you are likewise contributing to a problem, right? Mm-hmm. right? Like what's the point of covering your mouth and not breathe through your mouth and breathe out your nose? Like you're still doing the same thing. Uh, George, did you raise your hand? What's up? <clears throat> you need to unmute yourself, baby. You're muted, you need to unmute George. yourself, Bubba. Okay. Um, One thing I'm noticing is whole families shopping without masks on and um, as a group. I'm seeing groups of people without wearing masks, small groups, and um, uh, mothers with infants, babies. uh, The other day I was shocked to see um, a, a young woman carrying a newborn without masks on. And 
I'm, I, obviously, I'm upset, you know. I will say this, though. As upset as we are today, I have the cure for everybody. The single thing that's going to fix us all, and it's some spiritual healing, baby. <laughs> We're going to go into spiritual healing today. That was quite an introduction. <laughs> but let's talk about spiritual healing and how it's going to save everybody. Well, let's define it first. I will Hey, that is a fantastic thing. Larry, what you, uh, Scott, you seem like the person who is not only with the medical background, but also would probably know some things about spiritual healing. Would you mind telling me about it? Because I put it, spiritual healing into my Google Maps yeah. on, on the internet, on the old internet, and I have red dots popping up all around my city. I can't wait to check out all these places. What's, yeah. what's spiritual healing? So just to, just to clarify, I don't, I don't really have a medical background. I just work in hospitals doing the IT. Fair enough. But whatever. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, from what I understand about uh, spiritual healing is it's like a form of magic. You know, that's really all I can say. Who do? The way that I understand it, for the most part, generally, um, you're either calling on powers from God or power hmm. spirits or powers from somewhere, some other invisible place that, and, you know, there's, you know, there's different forms. There's, you know, there's, um, I don't know if you understand, you uh, know about chi, the power of chi, like this internal power that more Eastern wisdom traditions teach about, channeling certain your body's own energies to open up mm. channels in your body that might be in pain or suffering or something like that none of this stuff is scientifically proven mm. and if anything it may give people a placebo effect where they think they feel better and you know and it helps them feel better but it may not be you know curing anything and that can be inflated to think that it's curing them or doing something yeah. significant for them. But yeah, I don't know of any evidence that that's really the case. Can I throw out, so I actually, you had mentioned voodoo, Larry. I have family from St. Thomas, and that's actually a thing. Well, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> what sure. we grew up yeah. with. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, in the, it's the idea or the mindset of, you know, all medicine does is activate the things that are inside of you to take care of yourself. Oh, th there's so a medical a short term cut. for that. Mm, talk <laughs> <to> homeostasis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that will bring you back quicker yeah. than, I mean, that, that is your mechanism for bringing you back to health. When yes, you're sick. It's, it's how you now, get back to equilibrium. Uh, the spiritual healers mm. seem to hijack that and call yes. it, you know, theirs, that they, they are using the spirit right. to do that. Right. Right. They're saying, hey, we have a better shortcut that's all natural, no additives, no weird chemicals mm -hmm. and stuff like yeah, that, it, that just it, awakens your body to fix itself in the way how your body is naturally able to do it. Pure yeah. energy. <laughs> Sometimes in the form of light, sometimes in the crystal, sometimes in hexes, sometimes or in like just thoughts itself. and prayers. We can call our hotline spirit to help you out. There's a number of different things. In fact, and I'm not, I am not promoting this, but the nearest spiritual health institute nearby me is actually a university. It's a holistic spiritual university and they offer degrees, bachelors, masters, and doctors of divinity degrees. So you can also become a minister at these places too. It's fantastic. And I won't plug the website, but I'm just scrolling through it right now. And it's amazing. There's Basically, a word I'd like to throw out there in the middle of that accreditation. Is it accredited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is by them. They're called the Awakening Institute. Hi. They probably accredit others. Oh, things. God. <laughs> <laughs> there are no grades. Oh, my gosh. I'm reading through this. This is great. There's there's no grades. You don't have to worry about grades. Sometimes <laughs> negative influences on the learning process are bypassed through our artificial, uh, artificial standards offer negative influences on the learning process. So there's no grades at this school. I love it. I just... I, I, I wonder, because it's not the only, what the main point was, this isn't the only one. It's not like a one and done sort of thing or a passing fad. These are actual buildings you can drive to with people staffed in them who probably have a mentality that COVID is something that can be solved through their methodologies. And, and there is a there is the harm of, like I said, of a person who wears a mask incorrectly. It's like, sure, okay, we can probably can fix that. That's just a couple of fixes. And then there's the person who doesn't want to wear a mask because of political reasons, which is its own problem. But then there are the people who are teaching other people 
how to resolve real diseases through very unsubstantiated claims. And I find this to be some of the most dangerous forms of misinformation altogether, because these are people who are actively recruiting people onto the side against science and rational discourse. Yeah, you gotta remember there's an opportunity cost involved in that as well. I mean, if you take your time and your money and your energy and you go after spiritual healing or crystals or whatever, you are forsaking and not going after actual medical help that, mm. that might be able to cure your, your situation. Absolutely. And re remember, th this is what did in. This is what did in Steve Jobs. Um, Whoa! And, what are you talking about? You, well, Steve Jobs was, to, he, he, if I remember right, he had pancreatic cancer, and um, he was going after some uh, sp some alternative way to try to heal that. And as Larry just said, it was he was blowing his opportunity to try to um, pursue. Uh, a more realistic uh, remedy for that. I want to say that, um, you know, I moved here from California, the home of the nuts and the berries, and um, there's an awful lot of um, spiritual nonsense where I moved here from. Oh, wow. Yeah. So and, I just looked this up, the story that I mean, said. I've had it in, I've, I've had it, I've had it run rampant in, in, in a family close to me. Let me, let me put it that way. Sure. I, I tend to be scientifically minded and, and again, I have, I, I seem to be coming here with an attitude this morning. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. You're, also, you're absolutely <laughs> great. But what you you're know, saying I, about Steve Jobs was accurate. Uh, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2003, but delayed surgery for nine months even though it was like a critical stage of cancer. So they could try different alternative medicines, including um, alternative medicine, special diet, and some <laughs> other things too. So yeah, nine months, man. That is that is the make or break point, right? It is a, it's a sad thing when, when, if you're looking for an answer, here's the two things. Like for a person who, it's the same mindset of a conspiracy theorist. If you want a particular answer to be true, you can search for the pool of answers that are available, find the ones that you like and keep those and hope those are the actual correct, true answers. And for like a conspiracy theorist who wants to believe in Bigfoot, it's like, you're not gonna listen to you know, National Geographic. They're not gonna listen to Nature Magazine or anything like that. They're gonna go to bigfootisrael.com <laughs> and get all the details from them and all the pictures from them. And they'll be like, this proves this thing is right. But it's not about getting evidence to support your claims. It's about parsing the evidence that's available into true and false columns and being able to do that in a reliable and reasonable way. And the thing with these kind of like spiritual <clears throat> kind of systems is like they are offering answers to people who don't want to wear masks, who feel like the government isn't trustworthy, who feel like the science isn't like rational enough for them to actually be afraid of anything and maybe don't want to consider COVID as like an actual threat to their lives and their family. This is like an available resource of information and news that they can uh, um, uh, aspire to, or at least listen to, or they find really attractive, but it doesn't necessarily make it true. And that's the problem because we're living in a time right now where the advice of experts and leadership is more distrusted than ever before. And if we can't parse true things from false things, in a global society, we all suffer from it if everyone except 10% of people aren't wearing face masks or aren't getting vaccinated because we're interacting with each other all the time. Right. And so, so we need to make an effort to, to, to highlight why it's important to be able to tell true things from false things. Else we're all going to suffer together because we're all in this pool. I have, a, I have one last analogy. I have the kiddie pool analogy. It's like we're sitting in a kiddie pool and, and one person decides to, to take a leak in the kiddie pool. And you're just like, no, we're all in this kiddie pool together. What are you doing? It's just like, I have a right to pee in this pool. It's like, no, you don't. It's my area. <laughs> you're ruining it for everybody. It's just like, uh, don't well, be in the kiddie pool, guys. Consistency. I like that. People lose, um, people are not consistent and they don't even think about it. Like, they say, well, the government doesn't have a right to tell me what to wear. Mm. Like they can't tell me I have to wear a mask, right. but you have to wear clothes. Mm. You have to wear all kinds of things and you don't complain about that. Mm. 
it's like, why is it, why are you nitpicking about this, which is actually saving lives, where wearing clothes is probably bad on other people's eyes, but right. <laughs> also, if we life threatening. Also, what sucks is if we had an administration where that can encourage both sides, because we're very polarized in this country. But if we could have mm -hmm. an administration that can that can mm -hmm. assess with both sides to be like, hey, as a unified message, let's tell the American people that this is a good thing for them, rather than one side saying like, hey, the scientists are saying this, and the other side automatically picking the opposite thing and being like, no, because we want to win this election. And it's just like, oh, you you took bipartisan job hunting into into this really weird realm where yeah. you guys will have these beautiful benefits and healthcare coverage, but the people that you're talking to don't. And you're, and, and because of that, like they need, they need proper information to at least protect themselves on this basic basal level. It's like, Hey, yeah. we're coughing. We can get each other sick, please. It politicizes uh, everything, climate change, mm. um, COVID, everything's becoming political, unfortunately. It's not good. Hopefully, things can get better. Uh, at least we've we've made some steps this 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 November to hopefully fix that. We got sixty-ish more days to go, but we'll see how we can make America great <laughs> already even better. <laughs> Again, Larry, I think we're at the bottom of the half hour. How about you take us out? Sure. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, to, uh, November 22nd, 2020. And let's talk about the atheist free thinking groups that you might be able to join here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, first is the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Uh, ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over to 1,000 members now, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can go directly to Meetup or Google or whatever and search for Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. Start one. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, you can find RET at rationalist.org. Go there and click on upcoming events to find out more about what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about Knoxville's Atheist Call in TV show. Now let's call Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And um, you can find them on YouTube by searching those terms. Uh, you can also find their archives by looking up Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Um, also, if you're interested in getting involved in the TV or the radio show, just come to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting and talk to us about it. You could be our next co-host or guest. Wombat, where would you like to pick up? So, this is the language of Bangalore, the grand sponsor of the show. At least what language is that? Atheism. <laughs> Atheism. What is it all about? Oh, cool. What does she know? I don't go. What does she know? I don't go. What does she know? I don't go. What does she know? I. What does she know? I. What does she know? I don't go. Where is love, guys? <laughs> what it is? <laughs> We're gonna be talking about. Where is the love? Listener, listener love. feedback. Listener feedback, guys. So, uh, e Echo Centric Homestead said, "Hey, uh, on last week's show, we were talking about what atheists actually believe, and we had a lot of really good comments on last week's channel. And Echo Centric Homestead said, atheist just refers to a lack of belief. They can't be defined by what they do believe. And so it was a really good conversation to hear what you guys actually did believe. And that's true. And I think, you know, even in that last segment where we're just saying like, hey, send, name some labels that do describe what your beliefs, what your background were. That was the most enlightening for me because I learned things about you guys, despite the fact that we've been talking for years and chatting for years, like, oh, I finally knew these things about you. That's great. Like we knew you're atheist, but I didn't know anything actually about what you did positively believe. I think that was wonderful. Cool. Dada's Trading Room says, what do atheists believe? Atheists either believe that no God exists or be they believe that there isn't sufficient evidence to believe that any gods exist. Uh, 
uh, I would argue that atheists don't believe that no God exists, though there are agnostic atheists who do maybe have that kind of belief. Atheism Gnost is just gnostic beliefs. Uh, gnostic gnostic beliefs, atheists. Yeah. Yeah. Atheism is just the lack of belief in God. And there are there are people who will add stuff to that, like Republican atheists or like conservative atheists, liberal atheists who think like, hey, there I don't believe in a God and you shouldn't eat animals. But that doesn't fall into the atheist label. It's atheism plus something else. Um, James Corletta says, atheism is one thing, a lack of belief in gods. Atheism is not an affirmative belief that there is no God or gods. Humanism is the belief that all humans are equal, and as I'm concerned with, there is only one race of humans, regardless of culture or skin color or any other differences from one being to another mm -hmm. human. Let all humankind get along. I right. love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> James Carletta gets the winning mm -hmm. <laughs> art comment of the show. And yeah, you know what? Let's just leave it on that great note. Great job, guys. And thank you so much for all the feedback. Feel free to leave more comments and we'll go over them in the next week's show. Yeah. Uh, what we were talking about today was, um, you know, COVID's getting worse. We just reached 12 million cases of infections just in the United States of America. That's nuts. While other countries, on the other hand, are you know in the thousands or probably already resolved completely new zealand is completely resolved with covid england's already opened up its movie theaters and stuff like that the world is looking at america and being like what's taking you guys so long we figured Freedom. this out <laughs> <laughs> it's like what's going on over here and now we have before when it was january it was just like how bad is this disease how fast is it spreading how bad is it like what's the death rates now we have all the data like now we can look at all the different countries and figure out what they were doing compared to what we were doing and be like they were doing it better than how we we're doing it because they don't have this problem anymore all these guys did the same thing we're not doing that thing and we still have the problem so why can't we get why can't we get our stuff together and and that leads us into the second half of like what can we do better what can we inform our medical industry to say what can we say to each other to make ourselves more consider it to each other. George, I'll have you start. What, what was on your mind? Well, again, I'm, I'm holding up this, uh, the not so daily post Athenian, my, my local newspaper and its headline, Athens council majority encourages mask wearing. So I think the first part of how to solve this problem is to keep ourselves alive. And I mean, that's, where I'm at, you know, it's like the the stewardess on the airplane says to the passengers, first put your mask on, then put the the mask on the baby, you know, and so we we've got to keep ourselves alive, and. Here in Tennessee, I, I understand that there's one county that has made it mandatory to wear masks in public places, and I can't remember what county it is, but my county has just voted to, I mean, the city council has voted to, to tell people to wear masks, and they're not going to wear masks. So right. you've got to do it legally. You've got to put muscle behind the words. And it is mandatory in the in the county, just two counties above me, where Nashville is located. So it is actually mandatory there. You can get fined, but no one, I don't believe, actually does. And there's so many people in Nashville. So, but, you know, that, that is a good thing too. But you're right. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily like, how do I put it? We need to make people care. <laughs> and there's only so much stick you can put on the, on that carrot but you need to make people care that there's a carrot there. <laughs> that makes any sense. Cause I don't need a more, I don't need a more, I don't need a more gung ho police state to live in personally in 2020. What I'm looking for is just more considerate people. And how can we inspire that in people? How can we make people care again? Scott, what do you think? Yeah, um, oh. it goes back to um, a little prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. So if we can get people to, um, you know, wear the mask and social distance that's what that's the practical aim that we should have as to why they're not doing that it seems like it comes from a, a place of political bias and mistrust of science and mistrust of media and information and so i talk to people all the time about it on social media and things like that and it seems like they think that you know, there's a big conspiracy. And so it's just hard to, it is, you, we have to get them to understand that the consensus of science 
is not a fallacy to appeal to, you know, because they oftentimes will tell you, well, you're just appealing to most scientists. Well, that's an appeal to authority. That's not a way to arrive at truth. And it's like, no, that's, they're actual authorities though. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with appealing to actual authorities. You know, they get, they don't understand that. And then, you know, then it becomes, well, even if they are actual authorities, we don't trust them because they have, they want to make money, you know, and it's just, you have to overcome these conspiracy theories, but that may be a big job. And you have to start with trying to understand what goes through these people's minds. Where, where, where are they coming from? You know, because I think, okay. there, you know. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Where are they coming from? What's what's the root of this? George Scott, I would I would like to follow follow up on what you just said, because it's something that has been on my mind. I mean, I, I came here about five years ago from California, and it's taken me a, a long time to just uh, be able to understand to, to to any degree really the difference in thought in thinking and and the one thing that that I'm aware of right now is that a lot of people around me are afraid of people who are different than them and people who live in other places in other words there, there is this this us versus them mentality and i think there is a true fear of the other and the scientist is has been made to be the other to them this is so very true this the solution will not happen before more people die this is going to I'm not going to be alive when this problem is solved. I mean, the, 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 psych, right. the psychology. Let's not go too. Oh. There's still the chance that you could survive even this, and then brace yourself for the more crazy thing that'll happen in 2022. That'll be the. Crazy. Well, well, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because of my age, because I'm so old, that mm. th that I mean, I'm older than I look, and and. and um, I'm just saying it is there has to be a wholesale revolution in the way people are thinking, despite the fact that they are being bombarded with uh, I'm trying to use polite language that's suitable for radio. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Larry and I appreciate that. <laughs> no, hey, the, can the, I throw the, something at you, George, and you let me know if this sounds good? Yeah. I think what we have is. Yeah. We have a leadership that is not informing masses appropriately. And we have a contentious administration right now led by Trump who is who has documented examples of him calling this a hoax, calling this just a political move by other countries, that it's one country's fault, it's not our fault, that he won't wear a mask, literally said won't wear a mask, you should just breathe bleach fumes, uh, you should take this random thing that ended up not working at all. And then when he got sick with COVID, he gets helicoptered out to, you know, the, the most expensive hospital, gets the best drugs possible and comes back and top his mask and yep. says, ah, oh, there was no problem whatsoever. I'm just going to keep not wearing a mask. No problem whatsoever. And he, meanwhile, is still systematically infecting everyone in his cabinet and, and his staff. Like, until we have someone that's not representing America or until we have someone that is representing America showing that it's taking it seriously, you're not gonna have the people who are looking up to that one person or that one example as, as, a, as proof that this is an actual problem. You'll always have it be like, oh, it, this is hap something happening in Seattle, but the president doesn't care about it, so it must not be a big problem. Likewise, we need to have unity I, we really need to have unity on this particular issue because it's killing Americans, whether they're red or blue or whether they're whatever color in between. I have and, a little fear. Yeah, though. go for it. Um, the, the fear that I have is that the, the reason that these people are rebelling against, you know, science and uh, media and things like that isn't necessarily because of Trump or because of a specific leader. I think the leaders are responding to their base of people 
And so you have to kind of dig a little deeper there and say, what is it about these base of people that's motivating them? And yeah, let's dig down to the foundation. Yeah, let's 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 undercut, let's cut the knees out from these people. Let's figure okay. out what it is that that's that's brilliant. Yeah. Can I throw something out? I think I might have something here. I just think it's anti-intellectualism and in, in its core. I think it's people who, in <clears> a <throat> sense, don't like feeling like they don't know something. And as a result, automatically distrust people who do know something that they don't. And it's like, what do you mean you know something? Because I can tell if you're stronger than me, you would have bigger muscles. I can tell if you're faster than me, you'd be in front of me. But what do you mean if you're smarter than me? You're not smarter than me. Can you take a carburetor out of a truck? <laughs> I can, you, it's like, no, but I can make a vaccine that'll stop you from the disease. I don't trust your vaccine magic. That's <laughs> like you said, in intellectualism, like um, these same people correlate to religious thinkers too. Mm. And scientists and people that yes. are forward thinking are not religious religious so then we get back to this us versus them thing right i can't trust anything these atheists think yeah. because they're scientists and they're pushing all this fake news on me right because they're trying to destroy my religion and, and take my god away they're taking my culture right taking my yeah. Jesus away. yeah no and, i have a book that has all the answers what do you mean you have different answers like that doesn't make any sense to me like you're belittling my beliefs when you come out with new science that helps my life that's not what i'm into yeah people are tapping into something george what do you think well um you know i can't remember this guy's name there there's a fellow in uh, berkeley or near berkeley california he's a linguist and um I need to uh, read some of the stuff that this man has written, because I think that language is a key. Language will be a way in. And um, the other side, if I may be so bold as to say this, have been using psychologists in their think tanks to frame language, to, to understand how to convince the rest of us to, their, to, to the way of thinking that they want the indoctrination, the propaganda. There is a steady supply of propaganda that some people are being exposed to. They're in their own echo chamber, and the propaganda is coming at them every, every single day. And they're not listening to us. But in at the very core of it, when we speak with them, when we have the opportunity to speak with them, the words that we use may matter a lot. And to be honest, I don't know what the right words are. I don't know how to make this communication happen, but I, I have to think that if we are going to have democracy, the success of our society is going to rest upon people who really can think rationally and can understand whatever the truth happens to be. And right now, this is ripped apart. Right. And we need to we need to make the effort to inspire critical thought in other people. And we can do that through argument debates, but also street epistemology, I think, or Socratic examination. There's room for that as well. Scott, yes. what do you think? Something um, that, that's really valuable. I was reading this about a couple of weeks ago. I forgot who the author was. It's a psychological book, but it was talking about people's beliefs are not um, formed by what the people themselves think. They don't believe things for the reasons that they think they do that it's all really based on feeling. Feeling is what motivates what we believe and the choices we make and the behaviors we exhibit. So the language has to make people feel a certain way. Just dispensing facts does not waver them away from beliefs that are more rooted in deep-seated feelings that they may get from church or from mm -hmm. certain church leaders or people that make them feel good or make them right. feel a certain kind of way. Um, these facts are just cold and it just goes over their head or they don't care. Um, yeah, you know, just as, no, you're absolutely right. Because how many times have we seen a graph where it's like, these are how many people are dying and it just keeps going up and you're watching, you're like, that's just a blue line for a lot of people, you know? I mean, on a, on a bigger scale, and this might sound really bad and I hate saying it, but we know that um, people have changed their view about the Bible and religion based on 
the culture, it just becomes undeniable that the world is round and that, you know, we're not the center of the universe. And then they've kind of incorporated these right. facts into their religious interpretation. Sure. And now they can feel good about talking about facts in that yeah. religious context. I mean, unfortunately, it may be that these new facts that we come up with, these things that we want to change society has to be incorporated within yeah. their structures, no. within their belief structures. So, and it sounds like a cop-out or it no. sounds like a compromise, but it may be effective. So we had, in my science background, we were making biofuels like uh, for, for to supplement um, fossil fuels. But when Trump got into office when we were in the Obama administration it was like, hey, we're making this to supplement um, diesel pl or f fossil fuel platforms. We're making these biodiesels that are sustainable and renewable. And this is like a good way to, to al alternatively supplement our fossil fuels, which are limited supply. But when Trump came to office, mm. all the um, the terminology that we were using to sell needed research to to generate these renewable fuels had to change because the conservative mindset is fossil fuels will be forever. <laughs> There's no need to come up with alternative fuels. So we were like, ah, oh, I see. Well, then we are making renewable fuels as a way to better leverage our domestic supply of fuels, which is crucial for our domestic security. And like, there was a completely different set of words that we had to use. So we got the research funding, but we had to curve tail it and dovetail it to, to applic to appeal to a different kind of mindset. And if that's what it takes mm -hmm. to get people to wear masks, I'm fine with people at church being like, hey, look what God invented. It's a vaccine. Isn't God awesome? Like, yeah. He made yeah. this thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. Get, take the shots, guys, one by one. Do it with the bread, a little bit of grape juice, and get the thing in your arm and get out of here. What do you think, George? <laughs> I love that. You see, um, what you just said is that God created the science. God created the scientists. God created the vaccine. You know, really lay it on like now. This. Get vaccinated. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and get okay. Um, the guy who I mentioned before is named George Lakoff, and you can read about him at georgelakoff.com. Okay. And um, um, we're going to have to use language as well as they do. And um, we have to market uh, it. We have to be better marketers of good ideas. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't remember which of us just said this. Uh, um, we have to reach to pe reach people at the emotional level. Hmm. I, I, I don't think that um, doing it on the basis of uh, reasoning is, is going to get to their hearts because they they have been deeply deeply indoctrinated to so, you know to think yeah i do want to say this in Go the ahead. contest of messaging in the contest of getting a message out there the truth will always have a handicap to falsehoods because the truth doesn't taste good half the time <laughs> Even half the time but a good lie ooh that's the most delicious thing every single time it's junk food it's chocolate <laughs> it's sweet it's perfectly savory the truth is like cornbread <laughs> with a cracker it. it's just like it's a little dusty it's like but it's true though it's like yeah but it doesn't taste as good as this thing. it's like that's a twinkie that's been deep fried yeah. in chocolate and it's like yeah it's delicious it's packaged the vaccine as holy water in churches <laughs> <laughs> so how do we so how do we better market the truth in my opinion it's not so much dressing up the truth you don't need to dress up the truth what you need to do is make people appreciate the truth more and and in my mindset i once went i used to love candy i used to love candy it was the only i had a hard time not eating candy for a long time and then one new year's resolution i said i'm not gonna eat candy for a year and i did it for a full year and i bought so much candy on new year's day to celebrate the time <laughs> when i could eat candy. i had a table full of it like a literal bar table full of candy. I had gushers gummy worms everything like all my favorite stuff and the day the second new year's rolled around i'm like can't wait to eat these things put the first thing in my mouth i'm like whoa way too sour spat it out tried something else can't whoa, bleh, don't like this tried something else i'm like i don't think i can eat any of this i packed up all the candy and i just gave it away to uh some of the workers at work i had fundamentally changed the way how i appreciate flavors and yeah. And since then, I haven't tried candy again. It's been like three years since. That's what we need to do for the people wow. who need to be truth seekers. We need to give them an appreciation for truth versus their lies that they're they're operating on. 
Yeah. yeah well, we what do you, we you guys... them, get them to give it up for a year? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be great if it was like, hey, man, just don't listen to Fox News, CSBN, yeah. MSC, all this. Or preachers. Just do that for one year. Or preachers. Yeah, one year. Yeah. What if you did one year where you weren't religious? Just try it and see what happens. <laughs> oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine how many people would just be like, what have I been doing? Right. Just give one year unplugged. Just try right. that. Ugh. Amen. You guys Blessing. all <laughs> were conditioned by religion. Yep. I, I was not, so I got to I got uh, to ask you for for your um, uh, view about about whether what I'm going to say sounds plausible, and it's a repeat of what I said a couple of minutes ago. Um, can we can we affect them by? by saying that God created the scientists, that God created the vaccines, that God created the science. I would prefer not. I know well, it might appeal to some, but I don't think inversing a lie makes well, yeah. it any closer to the truth. Go I have a there. meme about uh, Christian scientists. You know, when they're, when they're doing science, they're not doing religion. And when they come up, when their science comes up to, with something against their religion or opposite to their religion, they are silenced yeah. by religion, like Galileo and yeah. um, several Charles other Darwin. scientists. Yeah. No, like um, all it, You know, it, science and religion are separate things. And uh, again, once again, religion tries to hijack the best things for itself. And in this case, it's hijacking science for itself. Yeah. Larry, are they are they actually science silenced within their own minds? What do I you would think? say oh, I can't yeah. answer that. Well, I wouldn't st I couldn't think for them, but yeah, I would definitely say like I think Galileo was locked in prison. Yeah, he was Socrates. house arrest for 15 years. He was like and his works this is were burned. <laughs> Wow. Charles Darwin, if you read his first, you know, discourse on like the idea of like humans being just animals that, you know, evolved like anything else. Yeah. And they, they did. very delicate about how to approach yeah. that subject. Right. And Br who was it? Taco Bruno? Was, Taco was, Brahe? No, it was Bruno. I can't remember his first name, but he was burned for mm -hmm. his heretical uh, st statements about the planets and yeah. uh, the, the sun being the center of the universe or the center oh. of the yeah, the there's, there's the idea of if the church is Solar funding me science, the church wants the answers that the church wants, right. not necessarily the science right. answers. Mm -hmm. and so it's like when you come out with answers against the church, despite the fact that you're honestly looking for them, right. that's a big problem. There's mm -hmm. interests in there, like your livelihood's there, yeah. your family. And it, even a few years ago, uh, the, this, the Pope came out against looking into the Big Bang. He <sighs> said that would be like looking up the skirt of God, you know, and, and examining God. We <laughs> can't do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and so they're, they're just trying to halt certain scientific advances uh, in their... Um, and the footsteps, right. evolution is one of them. Uh, and, gene therapy, you know, hmm. um, big, what is it, stem cell. Yeah, stem They don't cell want research, us to, yeah. do, to look into that. Everything, really. Everything in science has, like, there's an eventual political glass ceiling or a religious ceiling where right. it's just like, we can make this awesome. Yeah, but what about God? It's like, what? God, they're making carbon fibers. What are you talking about? Like, it makes no sense. I want to I wanna throw out one random... Oh, I had it. I had it. So the idea is, is like, um, there is there's a way to sign black. So if you're listening to saying black lives like matter, like I can say black lives matter. But the thing is, this means the color black. This is for people. This is how you say black people. So like black lives matter, right? Or important. And the, the reason why I'm distinguishing the two is because there's there are some knuckleheads in the black sign language community, and it's very small minority, that say only black people can sign like this because of the struggle. If white people want to say black people, they have to use the color. And I'm like, that is the dumbest thing possible. <laughs> you shouldn't have skin color limitations on signs that you use for like everybody. And their mindset is, well, you know, there was a period of time where black people had to struggle against racism. So what we're doing is just reversing it to solve racism. It's like inverting racism doesn't solve racism. We get rid of racism by fighting against it, not by inverting it. And in the same sense, I don't want to come up with different lies to appeal, to make science more appealing to religious people. I just want science to be the thing that people are naturally inclined to believe. And yep. I don't want to dress it up in this religious skirt. I just want to be like, this is science. It's been around before your religion even existed. 
pay attention to it because it's it's going to be the reason why you're listening to my voice right now. It's going to be the reason why you're wearing clothes right now. You don't need so so to dress it up. But how are you going to make the transition? Hmm. I I think we can do it one conversation. That's the key. My my That's deal is. I feel I can, can chat with anyone. I feel I can talk to anyone. And I, I'm, and I think what I would encourage people to do is learn how Socratic examination works. Look at our videos and find out if you frame a conversation around how people get their information rather than what the information is or about them personally. If you target, how do you inform yourself and how do you re determine that this method is reliable or not? That's, that's a great way to have a five minute conversation to make people start to believe that they need to pay more attention to about how they parse true things from false things. And it tends to be the case that when people work on that on their own or with other people, the falsehoods fall to the bottom, the truths fall to the, or rise to the top. It happens consistently because science is predicated on the natural instinct on people wanting to know true things. And if we all work on this together, we're going to know true things and we're going to know more true that's, things than we had before. Scott, what do you key. think? Um, my fear is that the, the, the real truth is that some, a good portion of people don't care about truth. They care more about beliefs than truth. Exactly. And what we have to do is help them change that, that desire because they, they're, again, they're motivated by feelings. And if they feel stronger about beliefs than they do about truth, it's not going to help to kind of like rationalize with them or even get them to question their beliefs. They'll say, yeah, I know it's, it's probably inconsistent, but I have faith and that's all I need. Have a good day. But if we can get this hunger for truth, for mm. real truth somehow, like maybe for me, it was a pride thing too. Like somebody accused me once of being, when I was religious, accused me of being gullible and oh, you're just gullible. And I was like, oh, what? I'm gullible? Wait a minute. I'm not gullible, am I? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like fostered a little critical thing. Like, wait, maybe I am gullible, you know? Oh, that's you. That's an incredible step on your part. So a lot of people hear that and be like, well, that guy's a jerk. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. But right. that's, mm -hmm. that is a Scott Williamson, like, I'm going to make sure I'm not gullible and actually yeah, change my life see? for the better. I want to know how to make that happen. And I feel like for me, it's the educators I had in my life. The ones who are like, it's not just the answers in the back of the book that I'm trying to teach you for. I'm trying to teach you how to do algebra. Like, I'm not trying to just, I don't care if you got the right answer. I care if you know how to get answers or, the, or at least better answers than what you're getting right now. It's okay if you were wrong. Let's show the work and see where you messed up because I want to improve your process. I'm like, these guys are the people who put me on the right track to thinking. The guys were like my ethics teacher who's like, hey, it's not just a list of rules in a book that makes morality. It's a system. It's a practice. Figure this out. Write a book and, and write a paper and tell me why something is wrong. Why is stealing wrong? Is it just because it was written in the Bible or was it because we live in a society with other people and you don't want to get your stuff stolen? It's causing like harm. Yeah. yeah. Like, think about it. It's just like, whoa. Right. And then you go back to the Bible and you're like, whoa, this isn't, this isn't fulfilling to me on an intellectual level. I'd rather talk to my ethics professor. I'd rather, you know, read a book on science. I'd rather figure out how the universe works. And if my life is temporary, what is more important to me right now than realizing this wonderful universe that I'm in and, and detailing it to as much as I can, contributing to the detailing of it. And I think, you know, as Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan had said, like, we are the universe, human beings trying to figure out ourselves, right? Like trying to figure right. out itself. Sure. See, that, mm -hmm. that, that um, goes to, that touches on what people call spirituality. That's, mm. that's the part of our psychology that he was messing with that spiritual mm. side of our mindset, because he was saying, look, you are the universe experiencing itself. Woo. Like this kind of touches a feeling, a deep seated feeling. And it makes people wake up and say, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know? So there's an in-between there. I would agree. There's a gray zone where it's like, Hey, he is saying like, we are the matter of the universe formatted in a format or formatted in a manner where it's like, Hey, we can think and nothing was figured out for us. It's not like we were born in a society where all these problems were solved and we're just flying in rocket ships. Like we have this beautiful, unique opportunity to be like, we're on the frontier of figuring out how this thing works. Maybe four galaxies away from now, people have already figured out, but they aren't here now. We have the opportunity to figure this out ourselves, fresh blank slate. How wonderful is that? And what a waste of an opportunity would it be for 
given the random, like the roughly hundred years that we have on this planet to be like, you know, this one book is all I need to think about. <laughs> Let me just hear these gospel songs over and over and over again from childhood to, to deathbed. It's like, yeah. no, think what you could do. Think about what can you can do. Like, think about like, you know, Elon Musk, what he's doing and be like, oh, I could do better than that. Yeah, go for it. You totally can just, just try to contribute. You know, I but, saw yeah. a, um, a lecture. I think it was kind of a scientific lecture, but he, uh, there's a, a physicist named Max Tegmark. Hmm a big physicist and he was talking about consciousness and the brain and he has his own theory of consciousness and things like that and one of somebody in the audience says yeah but you're trying to say that consciousness all it is is um chemicals and neurochemistry and and matter that's all it is and then max tegmark said well the problem with your statement is when you say all it is mm. like why is it, why does that take things away from? Yeah, like why isn't that even it? more amazing? Like, yeah, and he that... went into the magic of it and the guy was like, wow, I never really thought about it that way. That you're yeah. actually your theory kind of makes mine look like child's play. I kind of yeah. like, this makes me feel better. Yeah. You know, and the guy said, that's, that's what it is, you know, yeah. selling, packaging the information in a way that makes people feel good about science, feel good about knowledge, you know? And we got to make sure we make people yeah. feel good about critically thinking. So uh, we're at, we're nearing the end of the show. Uh, George, you want to, you say we should check out georgelockoff.com, right? Yes. Uh, that's what I was going to say. You got, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, uh, you guys do what you want, but um, I heard George Lakoff a few times on the radio before I came here. It must have been around 10 years ago, and um, he struck a chord in me, and I just, I just decided it's time for me to revisit him nice. and see what he's got, what he's nice. got to say. So let me, let me nope. just throw that out. And George we'll, Lakoff dot com. George Lakoff dot George com. Lakoff. Very nice. Yeah. Scott Williamson, anything you would plug for next week's show? Anything we should check out before next week? Not the, not nothing in specific. Nothing okay. In specific. Sorry. I would recommend that you Google Maps Spiritual Healing and see how many places pop up around you. Do you have more than three? Let's see. That will call that the record. See if you have more than three places that pop up for spiritual healing around you in a 50-mile radius. Uh, Larry, what, what do you want to take us out? Yeah, I'd also like people to Google uh, spiritual manipulation, uh, which Ooh. is what um, preachers do. In, in, uh, well, it's also what directors do in movies. They, they manipulate your spirit so that you feel a certain way going through the movie and at the end of the movie. And preachers do that as well in church. Uh, spiritual yeah. manipulation. Uh, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My book is called uh, Atheism, What's It All About? There it is. Or and Atheism, it, What It's All About, if you get it from Canada. What It's All About, and it's available on Amazon. And if you're having trouble uh, leaving religious beliefs beside, behind, uh, visit Recovering from Religion. They might be able to help you with your uh, emotional or mental problems uh, doing that. If you have questions for the show, uh, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe and be notified when, when new episodes are posted. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Sayonara. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.